Now, Sierra, you about to fuck up the new shit, talking about the old raggedy shit, your marriage. If you don't stop talking about shooting in front of this damn man and enjoy the time you got with this man, if you're going to be together with this man, okay, fine. Leave the shooter talk for one of your girlfriends or one of your friends you gossip with on the phone or something like that man don't want to hear about shooter. Quite frankly, I don't give a fuck about shooter and don't give a fuck about him nor his cheek ass and you gonna learn to start talking about shooter. You gonna mess up your new thing you got you trying to start. All you got left with shooter is a divorce. Get that divorce. Shoot him a bird, say, fuck you, move on with your life. If you happen to see him run around Atlanta, shoot him a bird and keep on walking. Don't nobody want to hear about Shooter, and that's kind of messed up that you want to talk about the old shit with the new boo. Don't nobody want to hear about that. That's supposed to be our time, not my time, your time, and Shooter time. Leave his crazy cheating ass out there and, uh, out there and let him flow in the wind or whatever. Sierra, you better get it together now. You about to fuck up on the new thing, talking about the old regular thing that cheated on you and dogged you out. You better learn to let that shooter talk go and move on with your life. Karen, you and Nurse Bay, really, Nurse Bay, that's what we doing now. You got a little sugar daddy nurse. Mm -hmm. Well, a sugar baby nurse, I should say. I'm not going to ask where you found this nurse bad. I'm just going to keep my comments to myself. If that's supposed to make Mama D feel good, I guess having a lot of eye candy there, a.k.a. her nurse to take care of. Mm -hmm. You fucking nurse bae too, aren't you, KK? Mm -hmm. Karen, you fucking a new young bae, and you fucking a nurse bae too. Or was Nurse Bay first, then you got this 28, 29 year old man you got now. Mm. Okay, Karen, you and Nurse Bay. It's amazing how you got all these young men around you that you may have played with, might have not test out, might have not got your good test ride in, might have had fun going for country to stay. Mm hmm. Don't take Karen. You fucked Nurse Bay too, didn't you? I know you did. That's why you worked the brakes off of him now. You ain't smart, Karen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he did have a, a, a problem back there, so I understand. Mama D, you being so goddamn dramatic and trying to tell the story, trying to grab our, pull at our hard screens there. I thought you were finna say he was in the hotel fucking another chick or something that looked that better than you in the upgraded version of you. Okay, Mama Dean, you and your dramatics. I had to listen to that. I said, what's she finna say now? Okay, now say, okay, so he was in there doing drugs. Okay, Mama Dean, some people not able to handle that type of stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to handle that stuff. If I happen to find a significant other and they on the drawers, on the pipe, and on the crack, I don't know if I, I ain't gonna need much judge you, Mama D. You didn't been through enough with him. He didn't drug you through this town, the this town. His mama come fucking with you and... Oh, Mama D, I feel so bad for you. It, it, it's, you'll find an upgrade from Ernest. You'll find your better man that's going to be able to take care of you or whatever. Don't let it get you down too damn bad, Mama D. I, I'm sorry he went back to drugs again. Chose you over drugs. Gone for four days just to do some drugs. Some crack. I think she said crack. But yeah, Mama D, you'll be fine. Just go ahead and get it on out. Find you another man. Hell, take Nurse Bay off her arm, carrying him. You in good hands with with her car still in there. So you'll be good, Mama D. Okay, Mama D. First, you said you want to have fun with Nurse Bay and put your body to work. Now you want to give Ernest a second. Come on now, Mama D. Make up your damn mind already, would you? First, you say you ready to move on and you ready to test out your new body. Now you talking about some you in. Okay, Mama Dean, you in your dramatics. You all wait for the dramatics, I see. Okay, then. So we going to give him a second chance. And you don't like the fact that he took it. Oh, okay, Mama D, go ahead and do whatever you going to do. Before I continue this scene, as a leader, you get nothing else from me. 
nothing, zero, zilch, nada, no fucks allowed for you no more, sweetheart. Now, I understand you might want to try the sex one more time with Stevie to see what that help him and motivate him to at least help you come out with a song or have you ban on a song like you some sheep or something. But you giving him back the good is all over again after how he treated you and want 30% of oh, oh, girl. Mm. I guess you want five years of hell from Stevie because that's exactly what you're going to get from Stevie. As that leader, I no longer feel sorry for you. I no longer. No. Mm -mm. Now, see, if you're going to be a dummy, I expect you to be a dummy the first time. Now, the second time you this dummy, cry your damn eyes out. I'm going to laugh at your dumb ass. Stevie J cheating on you or trying to replace you with another woman, I'm going to laugh my ass off. Because at this point, you know what you're getting with Stevie. The first time he gave you a wet ass, he ain't did nothing for you. So now you want a wet ass the second time. Okay. Let's see how the second time this wet ass work out for you. Because the first time it didn't work out too well for you. Then he made you sign that contract. So you stuck in five years of hell. Enjoy yourself. Have fun with that. I don't want to hear you crying over damn Stevie no more. Because I'm going to laugh at your big dumb ass. I no longer feel sorry for you, Estee Leader. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> you ain't nothing to Jocelyn. You're never going to be Jocelyn. You're going to continue to get played like Jocelyn got played when it came to Stevie. So enjoy yourself. Have fun. Relax. Have a biscuit. Have a cocktail. Why don't you? So you can't resist him as their leader because he gave you a penthouse. Oh, you a cheat. I'm not going to much call you no hooker or a whore. Lord knows those on the tip of my tongues to call you. But I, I, you know what? All it takes is a penthouse and you'll take a fool back that did you dirty. That's all a penthouse, not a car, not a house, not some money. But a wet, what a wet ass in the penthouse, and you sold. You such a cheap day. I just, mm. you have fun with that. Like I said, Estee leader, five years of hell. Enjoy, eat it up. Why don't you? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, my God, this lady, you a dumbass. This fool said on film, I'm not putting a label on what we got going on, but I'm enjoying this. Whatever it is we got going on, I'm going to enjoy it until the wave finally come down and crash to the surface. So if it's their leader willing to give up their pussy, and willing to make love to you, make you happy, thinking she going to get something out of there by giving her a wet ass and making love to her, thinking her music career going to all of a sudden cause Stevie J and Charles. Ooh, mm. <sighs> it's their leader. He ain't even much claiming you, sweetheart. But yeah, you calling him. Oh. I'm done. And stay leader, if you like it, I love it. I have no words. Stevie, use the dog fuck out of her ass. Cause she dumb enough to call you baby and boo and all these little cute little Puerto Rican words or Dominican or whatever the hell she is. Go ahead and use the dog fuck out of her. Use her till them damn legs fall off. Use her, Stevie. Use her. Make her, make her, make her, make her have gray hairs and shit. Use the dog fuck out of her, Stevie. You are loud now. Now, as they lead her, you just pressing all your goddamn luck, aren't you? And one little scene, you pressing all the luck you can get. You keep on pressing that luck button. That luck button going to run out of your ass. You going to run out to the bone marrow, aren't you? Now, granted, I call just Britney or Madonna's character. As they lead them, she got one thing over you. At least she can sing. Now, what the fuck you call that you be doing? Bad, bad. When you hand a microphone to you. 
That's all you do. Bang. But yet you have the all destiny to talk about just Britney and her colorful ass wigs looking like a McDonald's. And keep on talking about people cheering. Even though I don't like the McDonald's character, you have no room to talk. At least she do got one thing over you. Her ass can sing. What the fuck you be doing? Bad. Shut up, Estee Leader. Oh. So Sierra finally fit to meet Keegley after she didn't talk shit about her and saying she wasn't being there for shooting in his time of need and his time of need weakness. So now Sierra asked him, um, is your chick gonna be okay? Cause I ain't got no problem boxing the bitch. I, I just thought I'd let you know me with that fuck shit. Me and her gonna box. Oh, that's right, Sierra. Warning full alarm now. You tell your helper now. She start that shit. It's gonna be me and her. Me and her. We gonna be all over the carrying on. Cause I ain't got no problem boxing the bitch. That's right, Sierra. Let him know here the time. Let him know. What? oh now he come Sierra with the bullshit. Talking about some you all up in my damn business. Now let me tell your goddamn business. Oh God, Sierra, you acting like a Carly Red now. Stop being messy. I do wanna see you confront high however. But don't go spreading the girl gossip now. Come on now. I don't like her. You don't like her. Don't go spreading the girl shit. Say it in front of her face. Make that egg roll down her face for trying to tell you what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. You get her ass when you face to face with her. Don't be going spreading that girl mess like that, even though she do deserve it. Oh, Lord, they done stuck Tierra ass in him. I thought that was a one-time thing. She come in to tell Tommy, look, I'm with Scrap now. Don't you even must think about it. That's my man now. If you want to fight again, we can fight again over him. You come back trying to school Brittany on Stevie J. I don't know how I feel about this, Tierra. I mean, I thought it was just a one-time thing with you. I don't want to see your face forever now. Not through no whole entire damn season. I, I you, you rolled me the wrong way the, the, um, the last episode I saw your ass. Now I got to look at your tired ass again. Okay, Tierra. So you're coming back as a supporting character slash I'm taking just Britney under my wing now. I don't know how I feel about that, Tiara. I, I, I'm sorry. You, your own life fucked up. You still mourning and still missing over Scrap, even though he played your ass and um, Tommy ass, and you still want him back. He didn't talk. He didn't talk this way back in your pennies, and you went to hand him over to him. Now you talking about managing somebody else? Oh. Manage your relationship. Manage your baby daddy. That's what you manage. When you get that shit together, then I guess it'd be okay for you to manage somebody else. And to them, Tiara, sit your tired ass down somewhere. Don't nobody want you to manage them. Don't nobody want you under their wing. Hell no. Fuck no. That's some fuck shit right there. Tiara, I'm sorry, boo-boo. Scrap not getting out anytime soon. You might want to move them eggs out of his basket, get them back to yourself, and hand them eggs to somebody else who might give a damn about you. Because once Scrap get out, and once he get a taste of a promised land, meaning not you, happen to find another dummy like you, he's going to move on away from you. I hope you don't think you're going to be happy with him. And you know Karen King don't like your ass anyway, so of course, she going to be there to try to fuck it up any way she can possible. So I I don't know what kind of happiness you expect in one Scrap. Um... But I'm here for you to get played like a damn fool all over again. Since you on the show, I get to laugh at your big dumb ass all over again. Going back round, going down memory lane all over again. Rashida. Rashida. Now this fake ass storyline and your husband cheating on you because he a no good ass. You know what I want to say, but I'm not going to say it. Rashida. So you wouldn't have let Big Dum Dum back in the house. 
You said he conned you, but no, he didn't con your ass. That is your house. You have say who allowed in your house and who not allowed in your house. Married or not married, the motherfucker cheated on you. You wouldn't have messed up your whole entire house with blue tape time my damn boundaries. You stay on your side, I'm going to stay on my side since you don't understand these boundaries. You stay on this side, this all me. Don't come across this side or we going to have a prop. Rashida, you are a fucking dummy. Dummy. I can't believe you wouldn't fuck up your own damn house with that ugly ass blue type. And I love blue. But you wouldn't have fuck up your whole entire house with that ugly ass blue tape just to prove a point and talk about boundaries. And this dumb ass in the damn confessionals up there, I'm happy she let me back in the house. You know, I, she have every right not to let me in the house, but I'm glad I'm back in. Y'all both need to take y'all asses to California, find y'all at acting school, Stay in that acting class till it's over. Give y'all a certificate or whatever the fuck they give y'all for that acting class. And then bring your ass back to Atlanta and film Atlanta next season. Because y'all motherfucking acting skills are tired as fuck. Y'all are tiring as fuck. And I'm sick of these tired ass storylines. Are you fucking serious? I'm going to mess up my damn house over... Mm -hmm. The day I let that skid mark back in my house, the day the day his mammy gonna be burying him or his daddy, whichever one, whichever one of his family members gonna bury him, Kelsey, he would not be in my motherfucking house. He would not be in there. Have me got blue tape up going through all the way through my house. I would not fucking not no. Mm -mm. And I'm about to fuck around and get mad. Let me end this foolishness right here, Rashida. You a goddamn fool. Shit. Kurt, go away. Go the fucking away, would you? I am tired of you. You talking about some you want to see your son, but you don't want to piss Rashida off. Rashida don't give two goddamn or two goddamn fucks if you go see that boy. That is your ch way. That is your borrowed child storyline that you pretending you're a child, but not really your child. Let me say that right there, right, right here, right now. That's not none of your child. You playing like that's your damn child. Trying to spend time with this child like you the pappy knowing damn well you ain't the goddamn pappy. So, <sighs> y'all need y'all motherfuck motherfucking ass whoop. Exploiting the goddamn child. The child can't defend itself nor say no to none of this stupid foolishness shit. Y'all exploiting this poor child out on the TV already. The baby can't even much talking. Y'all already using the baby. Illegally, I might add. For a paycheck to paycheck, just for y'all can run around with this. Kurt got a baby on me. Kurt cheated on me. He got a hoe from the script club pregnant. I'm not finna let you upset me today, Kurt. You need the Rashida. Goodbye. Well, Rashida, I respect that. Tell his ass again, motherfucker, fuck a D-Lo and fuck a you. You ain't finna tell me what I want to do. If I want this instructor that changed my light in the house, in the stall, in my car, he put a new engine in my car. If I want him, his daddy, his uncle, his stepbrother, his in-laws, his cousin, and all his entire family that mail in my damn um, workout video, what the fuck you gonna say? You can't tell me what to do. I am not your child. I might be married to you. Your track record of you cheating on me is long enough. Mm, get him, Rashida. Get him. Tell this ass again. Make him feel stupid trying to tell you what you can to do. Tell him and D-Lo to go fuck they self. Because D-Lo is not no real thing. And D-Lo ain't bringing no money into um the, the fraud. is not bringing no type of money into the fraud's household. Tell this ass again, Rashida. Tell him to go fuck yourself. Oh, so Dummy Mimi still want to help out with Stevie Jane. Manage these two peoples. Just Brittany and Keely don't get along. Keely feels on top of where I mean, just Brittany feels on top of where about Keely. <sighs> Mimi, at this point, you know what happened. You saw...
the little sit down you had with all Stevie J artists. You seen they almost fought, got your ass involved in it. I'm just waiting for one of them fists to come across your face and not to live the shit out of you. And maybe you will grow up just to go fuck himself when it comes to business. You don't agree with his business style and his antics when it comes to business, but you willing to help him out. Just cause he going away, but yet he at home playing the S A leader ass, and you okay with that? Great, Mimi. Great. That shows me right there you still a fucking idiot for Stevie. Enjoy yourself. I hope you get punched in the face with one of them fists that fit to get thrown somewhere. You need to get hit cause you need to be slapped for this one, Mimi. Keely, I am so sorry. Please don't come at nobody else talking about being professional. Because what you did that episode up there trying to spray Sierra for not being there for shooter, you know, too, huh? The way you trying to um, spray key, I'm um, spray um, Sierra about her not being there for shooter. Is that what you call being professional? Because I'm sorry, sweetheart. Please don't come at nobody else talking about being professional. Because you don't know that word. You don't know the meaning of that word, and you're not very professional. So. These two hoes for the fight, aren't they? Well, your pocket's good enough, young jock. And I know you see it. I, I guess them so much to really bless your damn pockets. Not a salon. With your little hair, I do that. You got that. She did it since everybody. Well, you said you had a couple of thousand haters. Now you want to venture into the salon business. Okay, young jock, I ain't gonna do much gonna hate on you. Go ahead and do you, I guess. If you got the money, you ain't been on the radio in forever. You got to do something, I guess, minus your comedy career. So go ahead and do that. I ain't even much gonna hate on you, young jock. Go ahead with your bad self. Now, BK. <sighs> I see you got a damn problem. Why you mad about Sierra talking about shooting and that's your homeboy. He don't know you fucking his ex-wife. But yeah, you got Sierra. Then you got a little piece of biscuit and gravy and coleslaw on the side of that one. But yet you hating on Sierra... If you gonna have all these multiple side pieces with your piece of chicken, BK, don't be mad at Sierra cause she's still talking about Shooter. Now see, I just got a Sierra ass about her talking about Shooter every time y'all get together to find out you got you a biscuit and a thigh and some coleslaw on the side and some baked beans. Damn, does it come with dessert, too? Do it come with a bowl of ice cream, too? I'm just a wondering. So if you got another lady on the side, then why the fuck if you worrying about this Sierra talk about Shooter? And why the fuck you want her to go ahead and end her marriage with him, even though she is done? Bye, BK. Bye. I'm not trying to understand your logic. Once you told me you had a biscuit in the thigh on the side, you lost all respect for me, homie. Wait, 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 wait. His name Bachi, right? So you mean to tell me you dating some hoe, a big mouth hoe, I may add. She got kids. That never came up in conversation that I'm dating one of your homeboys. Well, not homeboy. You said... I know him, but we ain't really cool like that, you know, be able to sit down and have a conversation like, what's up, dog? Go to eat dinner or whatever, though. But I know of him, though, but that never can... Uh, okay, Bachi, I understand you ain't the one for the drum. I understand you don't give a fuck about what happened back then as long as I got you now, but... Not only does Keely have a big-ass mouth, not a whole... Mm, Keely, you just get better and better by the second, don't you? Okay, Keely. You have fun with that now that your hood, I don't know what to call him. Know that your daddy is one of his friends that he know of. That He don't call a friend, but he know of the guy that we be face to face smiling in each other's face. And he got this over my head that he can use that, ooh. That must sucks if it might have would have came out that way. Could you imagine? I know you from my homeboys. 
woman that you married at me, and you come telling me about my one. Oh, that will fucking suck. Mm. Bacha, you should have asked me you for not asking the question. I would have had to know. I just would have had to know to see can I continue to date you or whatever, though. But you didn't want to know because you didn't want for the drama. So enjoy now. So let me get this right, McDonald's character. You mad at Keely because you feel like she switched sides when it came to the whole Erica Mina thing. If I was your manager and you done some fucked up shit or said some fucked up shit, I would feel some type of way too and say, yeah, that was kind of fucked up. Why did you say that? That what you said was fucked up about Erica being a child. She had every right to feel how she want to feel. She, you Like you say, she's your manager or whatever the fuck y'all got going on. She felt some type of way about that. She be, she felt bad that she said some shit like that by somebody else's child. I'm with her. You talk about my child, expect me to beat your ass, which Erica Mena was about to beat your ass. You was fucking wrong for talking about that girl child. A child that wasn't involved in this meeting and you went below the belt. And with that whole Erica Mena and her child thing, and talking about feeding her child and all this other bullshit you said. I'm with Keely. If you call that switching sides, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't switch sides then. You don't talk about nobody child and expect nobody not to react. You seen Mimi reacted. You seen Estee Leader reacted. You seen Keely reacted. They reacted the way they should have. You was fucking wrong in that situation, talking about somebody else's child. If you had a child and somebody talked about your child, you wouldn't know why Erica Mena acted the way she acted, because you brought up her child in the conversation in the meeting that shouldn't involve her child. And you wonder why Keely mad about the right well, as you say, sweet size. I sweet size too. Oh, well, get mad, get over it. Okay, Keely, you was dead ass wrong for throwing that goddamn glass at her. That's why you had she happened to jump across that table at you. You can egg your way, or not egg them. Bust that glass in her damn forehead. That's why you had that glass in your. Mm -hmm. Keely, you didn't have to hit her with that damn glass. I I'm just saying. Um, McDonald's crew. You could have sat there and let that girl talk because she was about to say something real or say something that might have touched your soul. I guess you didn't want to hear it. So you didn't want no parts of it or whatever, I guess. Okay. Anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.